<laughs> Due to a series of unfortunate events that occurred last week, I ended up having to upgrade my phone to the brand new Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. And that is the lens you are going to be looking at me through today. Because if you're caught up, my previous phone, the S23 Ultra, its camera started doing this weird thing to where like if I moved in a way it didn't like, it would pull the background like really out of focus and then it would start like shaking it too. It looked really bad. You've been able to see it in all the videos that I've made since I painted this wall black. But since I got a new phone, let's see if that issue is still going to be prevalent. I'm very curious to see if the camera on my S23 Ultra was just broken or if that's just a thing that happens with Samsung cameras. And I just never noticed until I painted this wall. And I really didn't want to upgrade phones because there's really not a whole lot of differences between the S23 Ultra and the S24 Ultra. Plus I hate the fact that most major phone companies are just purposely making their phones fail after a year so that you have to buy a new one. But that's just the perks of capitalism, baby. You all asked for this, but hopefully we can get a properly functioning camera out of it for a little while. But what's up goons? Denden Den BMX here. And today we are gonna be comparing the $799 version of the Epiphone Les Paul Custom to the brand new $1,299 version of the Epiphone Les Paul Custom. <laughs> So yeah, that video I made last week uh, unboxing this guitar, you guys had some thoughts. <laughs> what I thought was very interesting was that in my comments, it was still split right down the middle. A lot of people were very adamant that the new $1,299 version of the Les Paul Custom is actually worth it. And some people were like in the comments doing the math, adding up like all the upgrades that you get on top of the $799 version. And a lot of people were saying that the math adds up. Uh, except for one guy who thought $800 plus $800 was somehow $1,200. I don't know. But there were just as many comments of people having the opposite opinion of that. And the main reason why most people seem to think this guitar wasn't worth the price tag was because it was made in China, which I found very curious. I thought after these last couple of years, everyone realized that it doesn't actually matter where the guitar's made. What actually matters is how much time goes into making that guitar. But uh, I guess, I guess some people still hadn't realized that. And then I checked the analytics for this video and I found something very interesting. So it turns out nobody under the age of 18 watched my video. <laughs> actually, the majority of my viewers from the unboxing video came from the 45 to 54 year old and the 55 to 64 year old age demographic. And after I saw that, it suddenly made sense why so many people were talking shit about the guitar just because it was made in China. Boy, those stereotypes, they uh, they really stick with them boomers, don't they? <laughs> I just want to thank you guys for all the recent love and support you've shown me on all my videos, especially that Epiphone unboxing video. That video did way better than I thought it was going to do, so thank you guys for that. If you guys go on to enjoy this video, definitely let me know and help me please my dominatrix known as the YouTube algorithm by leaving a like on this video. That really helps a smaller channel like mine compete with the bigger guitar channels out there. Definitely leave a comment. I definitely want to know how today's guitar comparison is going to affect those thoughts and opinions you guys have. Share the video around, spread the knowledge, and if you regularly watch my channel and you haven't already subscribed, that's what's going to happen to your Les Paul. Is that what you want? Is that what you want? Look how happy Mark is. Is that what you want? Yeah, I didn't think so. Subscribe. We are on the road to 20,000 subs and any help towards that endeavor is greatly appreciated, but I'm done being a tool. Let's talk about the specs of these guitars so we can go play them. So let's start off with the $799 version of the Epiphone Les Paul Custom. Now I know some of you may be staring at this and be like, why? Why is it yellow? Why? I don't understand. Well, this was originally a Alpine White Epiphone Les Paul Custom. And no, I did not chain smoke next to it every single day for the past three years. Instead, I grabbed some amber tinted nitrocellulose lacquer and I just sprayed it over the white. I got a whole video on how I did it, I'll put it somewhere. But besides the yellowing of this guitar, it still remains bone stock. Now this version of the Epiphone Les Paul Custom comes with only a mahogany body. There is no maple cap or no maple veneer that comes on the $799 version. This guitar also comes with a mahogany neck and an ebony fingerboard. Moving up, you can see that this version of the Les Paul Custom comes with the Epiphone Kalamazoo headstock. Now don't get me wrong, I do like the way this headstock looks, but compared to the Gibson Open Book headstock, Regardless of the shape of the headstock, as you guys should know by now, I love that this comes with the full-size diamond inlay. So I'm happy with just that, regardless of the headstock shape. Now that full-size headstock diamond, the Epiphone logo, and the inlays on the fretboard are all made out of purloid. Now the next shape on this guitar is the 60s Slim Taper, which is a thinner neck. It's very comfortable. I enjoy it quite a lot. Of course, it comes with 22 medium jumbo frets. This guitar comes with Epiphone Pro Bucker pickups and a Loctone Stop Bar Bridge and Tailpiece. And those are pretty much all the specs you need to know for the $799 version of the Epiphone Les Paul Custom. It doesn't really 
really come with anything special outside of that. I don't believe there's CTS pots or anything like that. Uh, I don't believe this comes with a Switchcraft switch or a Switchcraft jack. However, the switch, the jack, and the pots still work very, very nicely on this guitar. Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention, it comes with Grover tuners. They work really, really well, but they got the gross kidney buttons. I don't know why, but Epiphone is adamant on making their guitars look significantly worse by putting these kidney button tuners on there. Now let's talk about the brand new $1,299 version of the Epiphone Les Paul Custom. Now this version it also comes with a mahogany body, but this version comes with a maple cap on it. The cheaper version of the Epiphone Les Paul Custom is kind of a hodgepodge of specs between like older versions and newer versions of the Les Paul Custom. However, this $1,299 version is trying to have the exact same specs that the current Gibson Les Paul Custom has. The current one has a maple cap, so this one comes with a maple cap. This guitar also comes with a mahogany neck and an ebony fingerboard. Now the neck shape on this guitar is a little bit fuller. Again, it's the same neck shape on the current Gibson Les Paul Custom. And on the spec sheet, they call it a 50s medium C. I would agree that it is around that size, but I would argue that it is just a little bit thinner than that. It's kind of like right in between the 60s Slim Taper and the 50s medium C. And it is just thick enough to where it doesn't bother me. Moving down, as you can see, this version of the Epiphone Les Paul Custom comes with the Gibson Open Book headstock, which is quite the visual upgrade if you're asking me. Speaking of visual upgrades, as you can see, this also has the beautiful full-size diamond inlay, but that inlay, the Epiphone logo, and the inlays on the fretboard are made of real mother of pearl on this version of the Les Paul Custom. This guitar also uses the exact same Grover tuners. I forgot to mention that both this Les Paul Custom and the other Les Paul Custom both come with a Graftech nut. Again, 22 medium jumbo frets on this guitar. This guitar also comes with Loctone hardware, which I really enjoy. But another one of the biggest changes between the new and the old Epiphone Les Paul Custom is that this new version comes with Gibson pickups, specifically the 490R and 498T. It comes with a Switchcraft switch and a Switchcraft jack, and this one comes wired up with CTS pots and Mallory capacitors. This version of the Les Paul Custom also comes with a long neck tenon for extra stability. Just like many people said in the comments of my last video, when you take this guitar and you add in the price of all the upgrades that come on this version of the guitar, I can see how the price does end up being what it is. Man, my meme went away. Shit. Okay, Mark's back. Now the specs alone don't necessarily justify the price tag on this guitar for me personally. One of the things I want to criticize the most when it comes to these new Epiphone Les Paul Customs is if the quality control really has improved on them. Because Epiphone has notoriously hit and miss quality control even today. Now unfortunately that's going to be a little hard for me because these two particular examples of Epiphones came set up quite well. But that's because both of them came from Sweetwater and they have that 55 point inspection and usually a guitar from Sweetwater isn't going to Come with a bad setup. I will say that right now, just as I'm holding them, I can feel that the fret ends on this guitar are just a little bit sharper. And while I wish that the fret ends on this guitar would be cleaned up just a little bit more, it is a noticeable difference between the two. I'm not saying the neck on this one is like gonna be tearing up my hand from fret sprout, but I can definitely feel a difference, and this one does feel nicer. But I know me talking about the specs is not why you guys clicked on this video. I know you guys want these two guitars to get real up close and personal, get tip to tip, and have a little tussle. We can spend this whole video talking about the specs and the looks of these guitars, but at the end of the day, how the guitars play and sound are what really matter. So let's actually go hear them and compare what they sound like, shall we? Yeah, I'm not even gonna lie. The tuners that came on this guitar just kinda suck. Not only are they ugly, but they kinda don't work.
spider on the floor, and I'm starting to think he might be a reincarnation of Dale Earnhardt, because he just keeps turning left. He keeps just going in a circle. <laughs> So I know I'm pretty late to this party, but I like just discovered drop C tuning. It's so fun. <laughs> Yeah, if I keep this guitar, I'm switching out the tuners like as soon as possible. These things are dog shit. <laughs> kind of a bizarre plot twist. Normally when I'm filming these comparisons, I can't really hear a difference until I'm editing. But like while I'm filming, I can hear how much darker this guitar sounds. Normally it's the Epiphone Pro Buckers that are infamous for being really muddy. But this specific pair of Gibson 490R and 498T pickups definitely sound darker than the Pro Buckers. Yeah, this guitar's G-string just does not stay in tune. Like, yeah, obviously Les Paul's have trouble with the D and the G-string, but this one's bad. All right, I guess that's gonna conclude the playing comparison. Definitely make sure to go down there in the comments and give me your guys' thoughts and opinions. How muddy do you think these Gibson pickups are? How muddy do you think the Pro Buckers are? Do you think the Gibson pickups still sound better even though they sound darker? Do you guys think this guitar sounds $500 more expensive than this guitar? I'm definitely curious to see what you guys think, especially since I was actually able to hear the difference during the playing demo, which I'm usually not able to. But that's going to conclude today's video comparing the $799 version of the Epiphone Les Paul Custom to the brand new $1299 version of the Epiphone Les Paul Custom. Real quick, I want to give a huge shout out and a thank you to Cosmic Steez, A Horse Running, Jet, 
Solar Flare, Jan Chocolock, Bandage Knives, Suno Verma, and Rob Heath. Those are the current channel members and their support really does mean a lot. If you want to join these guys, get a shout out in my longer videos, get access to my members only videos, most of which are guitar videos, and just help support the channel in a bigger way, then you can go down there, click the join button, tiers start as low as three schmeckles. And if you don't want to join a membership, but you still want to support the channel in that way, just as maybe like a one-time thing, there's the super thanks button down there. It's kind of like a little tip jar. But thank you guys so much for watching, especially if you made it this far. I really hope you enjoyed. If you did enjoy, definitely let me know and help out this video by leaving a like. Definitely leave a comment. I'm very curious as to what your guys' thoughts and opinions are. Share the video around. Make sure you're subscribed if you haven't already. We're on the road to 20,000 subs. And make sure you hit that bell notification when you do as well. Because in the next video, we're going to be comparing this brand new Les Paul Custom to my LTD EC1000T CTM, which is basically a Les Paul Custom with a bunch of modern day specs. I paid about $1,400 for this guitar, and I think it's worth every penny. So I definitely want to see if these new Epiphones can keep up with other guitars in the price range that it's been put in. But that's going to be it for today's video. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.